Thanks, Harold. And uh, thanks everyone for attending. Uh, happy holidays. Um, hope everyone enjoys the next few weeks. Um, we uh, at the Mets are pleased uh, to confirm tonight the signings of uh, in alphabetical order. Uh, <clears throat> outfielder Mark Canna, infielder Eduardo Escobar, and outfielder Sterling Marte. Uh, each of uh, these gentlemen are joining us from different locations around the world, I think literally, uh, but all are joining a rejuvenated Mets team that is uh, ready to compete in 2022. Uh, it's been an exciting few days for us, and uh, we're very pleased to be introduced, be able to introduce these three new players uh, to the Mets community. Uh, now I want to turn this over to Billy Epler, who uh, did all the legwork and the negotiations uh, that landed these three outstanding players uh, to the Mets organization. Billy? Hold on, Billy, we'll get you unmuted here. Gotcha. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. All right. So th thanks, Sandy. I appreciate that. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I would uh, I, I need to make sure to uh, to recognize uh, first, you know, Steve and, and Alex Cohen um, and their their willingness to, to kind of trust me um, and our baseball operations group uh, with, uh, you know, with these with, with these transactions, um, these are these are real investments um, into the Mets Mets team, and um, you know they serve, um, you know, our objective for for putting a championship caliber club on this field. Um, and Sandy, um, appreciate all your support as uh, as we went through these transactions and uh, kind of all the permutations that it, that it exist. Um, you know, having your counsel uh, w was really important and. And, um, and also, you know, I asked, uh, you know, some, some guys in, inside baseball operations that I haven't worked with for very long to do a lot of heavy lifting with me um, and, and be uh, side by side uh, virtually um, through, this, through this process. And, and between, um, you know, uh, alphabetically, uh, Bryn Alderson um, and Ian Levin and, and Ben Zosmer, um, they were, they were with me every step of the way as, uh, as I became acclimated to a, to a new organization, um, and, uh, you know, in, embarked on, on, on trying to put together this, uh, this club. And, and with that, um, you know, I'm very excited to be able to introduce, uh, again, alphabetically, uh, Mark Canna, uh, Eduardo Escobar and, and Starling Marte to the Mets. And just to say, you know, a little bit, um, about these guys, you know, Adding, adding three players, um, adding these three players really solidifies our lineup. Um, it's, it, it provides positional flexibility um, and depth and will really allow us to kind of take on, um, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the elements that, that get introduced over a, over 162 game season. So, and, and I think you're going to hear a, a common theme um, among this, this trio of positional flexibility uh, it was discussed with all of them uh, during during my conversations with uh, with their agents, um, and we want to be able to create a club that's that's really built to withstand the demands. And um, adding somebody with, with Mark's ability to get on base, uh, to make good swing and and no swing decisions, uh, play above average defense in the outfield, move around the diamond uh, is very valuable to us. And, uh, you know, additionally adding a player with, with Eduardo's ability to make contact and hit the ball hard and provide positional flexibility all throughout the infield um, and, 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 and contribute um, to, uh, to our culture uh, was, was important to us. And, and finally, um, you know, adding somebody that's as dynamic as Starling uh, was seen as critical. And he contributes to this, to this team in a number of ways on the bases in the batter's box uh, in the outfield. He's an exciting player and one that's going to help us win a lot of baseball games. Um, so this is an exciting day. 
um, you know, on the heels of our, of our press conference earlier, it, it's an exciting day in the Mets universe. Uh, and, and again, I'm thrilled to be able to, to introduce these three guys today. So with that, um, HK, Harold, I'll yeah. kick it back to you. Thank you, Billy. And thank you, Sandy. Um, if you do want to ask a question, please identify who you would like to ask that of. Obviously, Sandy and Billy are available, but uh, uh, as you'll see, joining is Starling, Eduardo, and Mark, and each of them will be available to address any of your questions, too. So with that, I think we'll begin with Steve Gelb. Steve, your line is open. Thanks, Harold. Uh, this one, you know, it could be for Billy or Sandy, but, you know, Billy was just talking about the skill sets of each of these players. And, uh, you know, I think that speaks for itself. But there's also been a lot of talk about the type of, of clubhouse guys all three of them are. I mean, even Max today said that Eduardo being here was a, one of the big reasons he wanted to be a part of this team. And he's never even met Eduardo yet. So um, how much did that factor into these decisions, these signings when you were targeting players in the offseason? Bill, you want to answer that one? Sure, sure. Um, it, it's definitely an element um, and a criteria that we look for. Um, you know, th these guys, this group, um, and then everybody, even within support staff, um, everybody that, that's in that bubble that that travels and, and moves, you know, with, uh, you know, with the with, with, with the club, um, they're with each other from roughly Valentine's Day to Halloween. You know, and we want them to be together till Halloween. That's a long time um, to 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 be with each other, and how that group integrates, supports each other. Um, that's very very important to me. Um, you know, one of the one of the things I love to to kind of talk about is, you know, will our players you know make their teammates more significant than they are? Right. Mm -hmm. We build that type of culture. Um, within it, within an organization that supports each other, and they understand the obstacles and and, and the things that they're going to have to do um, to get where this um, to get where this needs, needs to go. And so, ultimately, we're uh, you know we're excited to to bring this group into the fold with the guys that that currently are here, um, and uh, and to be able to achieve achieve great things for the Mets uh, in the in the twenty twenty two season. And then, I mean, this is really for, for all three guys, so I don't know which order you want to take. If you want to do alphabetical order, Eduardo, Mark, <laughs> and then Starling. Um, just why, why the Mets? Why did you guys make the decision to, to come here this offseason? And before that's answered, I want to remind uh, everybody, Alan Serial from our group is on, who will assist with, uh, with translation for, uh, uh, for Eduardo and, uh, and Starling. So go ahead, uh, Al. Eh, primeramente, Steve Gauss quiere preguntar por qué ustedes firmaron con los Mets. Bueno, eh, eh, yo tengo buena relación con Cano. Eh, siempre está, hemos estado hablando. Eh, me ha dado muchos consejos sobre el juego. Y una de las cosas que hace varios años dije que quería estar junto con él para aprender más y él siga enseñándome más del juego y, y gracias a Dios se dio la oportunidad y aquí estamos eh, esa es una de las de, de la claves que por lo cual elegí lo mejor ya que hay muchos latinos tengo mucha familia ahí y me llevo bien con algunos de, de los jugadores Well first off I have a, I have a good relationship with Cano um, throughout my career, he's given me a lot of good advice. And, um, and early on in my career, I always said that I wanted to, to, to be his teammate. And, um, and now that, I've, that I had the opportunity to do so, I, I decided to take it. Um, there are a lot of Latinos on the team. I, I think the team is really good, and I have a lot of good relationships with them. And um, I, I also have a lot of family in New York. So I felt like it was the right time for me um, to take on that objective. Thank you. Eduardo, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, bueno, para mí también, verdad, que muchas gracias por la oportunidad de, de traerme hasta con un gran equipo como 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 Nueva York, de verdad que entonces yo creo que esto es siempre una de las bonitas experiencias de, de que uno sueña siempre estar con un equipo como 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 los Mex, de verdad como dice Tali, este, uh, tengo muchas muy buenas relaciones con muchos de los peloteros que están ahí, ya puedo compartir con Tyler Walker, 
con el mismo Starling, con todos los muchachos, ¿verdad? Que me siento bastante orgulloso por esta oportunidad y compartir con todas este, estas estrellas que tiene el equipo, yo creo que va a ser un, un, un equipo bastante animado, de verdad que trae toda mi, mi energía, mis cosas positivas al equipo de los muchachos, está todo jugando juntos y con una, una energía todos los días eh, linda para, para lograr y querer lo que queremos que es ganar el campeonato. Well, I, first, I want to say thank you for the opportunity to, to be a part of this great organization. And like Starling said, I have a lot of good um, relationships with the players on this team, whether it's Tywan Walker or Starling and a bunch of the other guys that that, that are on this team at the moment. Um, but yeah, I, I also feel like I can bring the, uh, my experience, my energy to this team to be able to to be able to have a, a great experience going forward in, in these next couple of years. And um, and I'm, I'm excited for that opportunity. Mark, uh, the floor is yours. Yeah, I wanted to say thank you to Steve, Sandy, and Billy, first off, um, for this amazing opportunity. Uh, I'm very excited. And, and uh, the, why the Mets? And it's just the Mets because I think it's nice to feel wanted. And uh, the Mets made it abundantly clear that they wanted me. And, and they demonstrated that in various ways. And, and um You know, I think I was ready for the big stage and New York's a big stage and, and I want that big stage and to, to show the world what I can do. And and uh, yeah, I kind of got the impression that that the Mets were going to be going for it and I wanted to play for a competitor and and uh, I liked everything I was hearing from from Billy and Sandy every time we talked. So um, I'm just I'm very excited and and my family's very excited to, to be in a place like New York as well. Um, my wife and I are very much city people and, uh, and we're looking forward to being in New York and, and playing for the Mets. Thanks. Thanks guys. Uh, next question will come from Tony Decomo. Hey everyone. Uh, this is for whichever player wants to answer it. Um, you guys all signed with it a few hours of each other. Uh, Mark, I know you just mentioned, uh, you know, the vision for this team. I'm curious, you know, how much you're aware of the other things that were going on while you were negotiating and obviously Scherzer are signing very shortly after. Just how much you were aware of, of how how many new players, new faces were going to be pumped into this roster pretty quickly? Yeah, um, not at all. Not at all aware of what was going on in the background. Um, but once I found out, it, it was instantly like, started getting energized, started feeling it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that was a, that was an amazing day. And it was just one that I, I can't stop smiling <laughs> when I think about, uh, this opportunity. And, and I'm just so excited to, I, I played with Starlin last year in the second half and, uh, and I've played against Eduardo as well. So, so when I saw those names, I was like, okay, we're cooking a little bit here now. And, uh, and, uh, it was, it was cool. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of used to a, a little bit less exciting off seasons as well, uh, with my previous team. So, um, yeah, it, it was just kind of crazy. It was all very new for me and, and very exciting. Alan. Uh, ustedes lo tres firmaron entre, entre horas de, de, de cada uno. Uh, ustedes, Tuvían esa información que, que tanto movimiento iba, iba, iba a procesar y después también ustedes esperaban que iban a hacer una adición como Max Scherzer el, el lunes. No. Bueno, en realidad, en realidad no. Yo estaba en Europa en vacaciones y mi abogado comenzó a llamarme, a escribirme y todo lo que me dijo fue positivo. Eh, como dijo Cana, eh, jugué con él el año pasado eh, la segunda mitad y la verdad que lo de, el, el talento que tiene es increíble siempre está en la base siempre está juiciando a llegar siempre está eh, un tremendo jugador jugué también con Escobar y eh, me enseñó muchísimo eh, el tiempo que tuve en Arizona eh, fue maravilloso eh, siempre está con ánimo el muchacho y esa es una de las piezas clave que nosotros venimos a brindarle a aquellos muchachos jóvenes que todavía le falta mucho para aprender. Y, um, pero me sorprendió mucho cuando vi la noticia de, 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 del piche, ese gran caballo que estaremos ahí compartiendo 
eh, ese clujado y, y el estadio y la verdad que trajeron un, un piche para, para darle un poder al equipo y, y salir a competir todo el día fuerte. Um, no, to be honest, I, I wasn't expecting there to be that many moves so fast after Eduardo agreed to the deal. He, he, uh, he reached out to me and we, we were talking a little bit about how excited he was. And speaking about, about Kana and uh, just learning a whole bunch from him last year in the second half, just to see how he, just seeing how he gets on base, seeing how he hustles at every, every play and just learning from the both of them. They're both tremendous players. Um, I feel like I feel like we can bring a lot to that team, to a lot of the young players that are still there that, that still have a lot to learn and being able to to be a guide for them. And in regards to to Scherzer, to the Scherzer signing, um, I wasn't I wasn't expecting that. And when I saw that, I was excited to be able to to be able to be in the same clubhouse as as that great pitcher that he is. Um, and just so he can reinforce that rotation and and, and really lead us to to great things. And for Eduardo, oh, para mí de verdad que todavía no tengo ni palabra para pa, pa, pa mencionar lo, lo alegre que estoy. De... De, de, de esta oportunidad, de verdad que los últimos días han sido una, unos movimientos bastante movidos, este, los peloteros que han traído, de verdad que yo creo que además es una, una buena eh, química en el equipo con lo que hemos tenido, de verdad para, para, para uno como pelotero profesional, uno tiene que sentirse orgulloso de, de, del trabajo que ha hecho la oficina, de, de juntar tanto talento bueno en un solo pujado y, y eso, lo, eso yo creo que es parte del secreto que va a tener este equipo este año, de que nosotros podamos brindar esa energía y brindar con esa combinación de los peloteros veteranos con los peloteros jóvenes. Yo creo que de verdad que cuando vi también la noticia de, de que estaba está Limar y eh, ahora eh, eh, Church aquí, de verdad que, mira, todavía no lo creo, ¿verdad? Me siento tan alegre y yo creo que este año va a ser un buen año para nosotros porque eh, vamos a brindar toda esa experiencia que, que, que tenemos todo y ligarlas todo. Yo creo que va a ser un buen momento para todos nosotros y de verdad que yo creo que la oficina ha hecho tremendo trabajo y hay que felicitarlo por eso. To be honest, I can't even express how happy I am with with all the moves that the, that the team has made uh, from the very beginning. First, I saw the, the Starling move and then I saw Scherzer. And, and it's just, I feel like it's going to be a, uh, a tremendous chemistry that we have in that clubhouse, which is going to be a mixture of a lot of veteran guys, a lot of young guys to be able to bring that energy and that, and that, and that experience to be able to go forward, to be able to win a lot of games. And, um, and yeah, I, I, I just still can't believe it that, that we signed Scherzer at this point. And, uh, and, but the front office deserves a ton of credit for all the moves that they've made so far. Thank you. Thanks to all three of you. Tim Healy will come to your line next. Hey, this is a question for all, all three players. You guys are all pretty versatile in the field and in the lineup. What did the Mets communicate to you about their plans for where they want to play you defensively and offensively? Ustedes todos pueden jugar más de una posición, pueden batear en diferentes en diferentes lugares del de lineup eh, mm -hmm. qué fue lo que te dijo el, el front office de, de, de cómo lo iban a usar ustedes dos bueno eh, yo juego toda yo juego lo de la, yo juego toda la posición siempre y cuando yo esté eh, en el aino y en una de las posiciones yo haré mejor trabajo para ayudar al equipo lo más que pueda Uh, for me, I'll, I'll play whatever position they need me to play. Um, as long as I'm in there, uh, whatever part of the lineup I'm in, whatever position I'm in, I'll, I'll do whatever I need to do to help the team win. Um, bueno, para mí también lo mismo. Este, yo creo que la, lo principal de, no, de nosotros venir aquí es, es traer nuestra experiencia uh, al equipo y dar la, la mejor flexibilidad al manager y, y, y a sus coaches de, de ayudarnos en lo que necesite. Yo creo que cuando, cuando tenemos un grupo como el que tenemos, un equipo como el que tenemos, creo que hay que buscar la manera de siempre buscar ese espacio donde se necesite, uno está a, a la disposición del manager para, para ayudar al equipo a ganar, que yo creo que esa es la mentira de cada uno de nosotros, que eh, no importa donde nos pongan, simplemente ver el nombre todos los días ahí, pero buscar la manera de cómo el, 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 siempre está ayudando al equipo a ganar. Yeah, like Starling said, um, we're, we're here to do whatever, whatever to, to help the team win. Um, our job is to bring that experience to, to the clubhouse, to the team, It's also, it's also there to be able to give that manager flexibility to, to be able to make different moves. As long as we're in the lineup, we're going to do whatever we can to help the team win. And, um, and yeah, that's just going forward, whatever the team needs, wherever we are in the lineup, I feel, I feel like we can help with our experience and, and, and our ability on, on the field. 
And I think I'd like to just express the same sentiment. I mean, I, I feel the exact same way. Um, that did come up when I was talking to Sandy and Billy and I, and I just said, I, I don't care. Um, I'll play wherever, wherever you need me. Um, in the past, I've filled in for, for guys when they need a day off or when guys are hurt. And, and I'm kind of always embraced that role and um, take pride in, in, in my athleticism and in my ability to kind of play all the outfield positions and, and first if, if you need me there. But um, yeah, it's what it's wherever you need me. I'm, I'm happy to happy to go there. And then separately for Billy, if that's all right, I think this is your 13th day on the job full day. And obviously that's been a busy time. How would you describe the level of busyness over that stretch for you day to day? And do you think that you can benefit from the, in a, the anticipated lockout from a settling in slash getting to know the organization? perspective? Yeah. Um, I'm glad you're keeping track. It's kind of all blurring together right now. Um, so there's been, uh, it's been very active, clearly. Uh, the, the the volume of phone calls um, and Zoom calls. I mean, you know what I've done with you know. I know I mentioned uh, you know Bryn, Ian, and and Ben earlier, but but essentially, like we've just started a Zoom in the morning, and I just leave it on, and we'll go dark or put them on mute, but I just leave it on as a as a virtual office. It's been that kind of connected and that plugged in um, through this whole through this whole time period since I since I've started. Um, you know, I, I, I would, uh, you know, just say that, that moving forward, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for, for however much activity there is. Um, you know, I'm, uh, it, whether we're, whether we're doing player transactions, whether it's, um, you know, talking more, um, you know, infrastructure, uh, and talking about the institution and, and the, uh, potential hires that we have to make um, from a staffing standpoint, I, I'm ready for whatever's put in front of me. There's, there's not really um, any time to, uh, to take a break because, um, you know, I have to acclimate myself to a, to a, to a really new organization, um, you know, in a, in a short period of time. So uh, I'm just looking forward to whatever the next day brings and uh, I'm, I'm ready to go. Not to sound like a player, like I'll play anywhere, but I mean, whatever it comes, whatever, whatever serves up, um, I'm just looking forward to, to you know, to, to tackling those, uh, those challenges. Next question will come from Disha Thozar. Hey guys, uh, this is for Billy or Sandy. Uh, if you view Starling Marte as the starting center fielder, um, have you talked to Cano about what his role would be and just sort of how open he is to giving up uh, that center field job potentially uh, to someone like Starling? Did you mean, did you mean Nemo? Yeah. Oh, I thought you said Cano. I thought I heard Cano. Sorry. It's a, uh, <laughs> um, uh, so, um, no, we haven't, we haven't decided right now. I mean, what, what came up in the conversations was, are, are we comfortable having guys play all over the, all over the diamond? Um, I haven't had a chance to, to talk to, to Brandon yet about that. Um, I felt it would, it would, it would be a little bit, a little premature to do that um, in advance of getting a, a manager in place. Um, but I did have these conversations with, with both Eduardo and Mark and, and, and Starling, you know, through the process that, you know, it might not be just one position. You, you might move around a lot. Um, I've seen a lot of value come from managing the lineup and the workload uh, by moving players around. Um, and that was, that, was, that was by design um, for us. Um, to be able to, to, to deal with whatever adversities or deal with whatever, whatever obstacles is going to come our way, feeling like we're covered in center field in three spots right now. We're covered in shortstop in, in, in a, you know, two spots right now. We're covered at second base in three spots right now. We're covered at third base in three spots right now. Like We're covered, and that provides me, um, Sandy and Steve and – um, should provide everybody a lot of comfort that if we have to move things around, that we feel very, uh, uh, that we feel like we have very strong players to, to put in those, in those spots and, 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 and kind of, you know, again, navigate that, that workload um, that, that will, uh, that, you know, every team faces. So in, in the same vein, it sounds like you don't view Escobar as 
the starting third baseman either. Um, and you kind of are open to flipping him around or, or are you still looking for a starting third baseman as well um, to pick up before the season starts? I mean, I think it's, I think it's fair to say that, that Eduardo is going to accumulate a, a boatload of plate appearances. I mean, he can do that in a number of, a number of positions. So we're going to remain uh, preserve optionality, I guess. Tim Britton, your line is open. Hey, Billy, kind of going off that, those lines, you, know, you mentioned you've seen that value in, in managing workload that way. How differently have you thought about kind of having that versatility and positional flexibility over the last couple of years? It seems like it's grown in popularity across the sport the last few years. Yeah, I'm, I'm a huge advocate of it. Um, I love players that can, that can play multiple positions. I love players that can play on the dirt and the grass too. Um, I think it just opens up so many, um, so many different options uh, for the, for the manager. Um, and, uh, you know, it also helps too in, in days where, you know, if you're going to have a player that's going to play, you know, that's going to amass 550, 600 plate appearances. When you, when you provide an off day, there there's value in the fact that that person doesn't have to come in and pinch hit or, you know, come in to play defense. Um, Trust me, these guys are ready to do that. They're ready to contribute to winning baseball. Um, that was explained through the process, and, and they they get that and they buy into that, and that's why they're here. Um, but it is still nice to be able to provide a to provide an update for somebody that maybe has just played eleven in a row or fourteen in a row, and maybe that's been sandwiched between two road trips, and we've had to go west and come back east. And um, if we can do that. Um, and feel good about the names going in. Um, I think that's going to serve serve the club well moving forward. And then for for Sandy, uh, you know, Max talked about it earlier today. Billy talked about it earlier. Now uh, about the clubhouse chemistry part of this. You know, you were the one who was here last year. What what did you think of the clubhouse dynamic for the Mets this last season? That's a good question. Um, <clears throat> you know, I think the dynamic changed. Uh, during the course of the season. Um, and that's not unusual when a team is generally winning versus uh, a period when they're uh, not as successful. Um, so I think, look, we had, we, we had a lot of new players last year. We're going to have a lot of new players this year. And uh, what I'm hopeful is that those who were new last year have become more comfortable and, uh, uh, accommodating of, uh, of uh, uh, the demands that uh, are placed on them in a place like New York. Uh, but with, with, with the four players that we have coming in that we've identified to this point, um, you know, I think they're going to add immeasurably. Um, you know, we, we talked about uh, Max's contribution earlier today, but I, I think these three guys are going to have uh, just as big an impact. And, as Billy said earlier, um, makeup was a consideration, a significant one. And so these players are very dynamic, exciting, um, and are producers. But at the same time, we think they're going to be great citizens of the clubhouse as well. Thank you, Sandy. Uh, Ken Davidoff will come to you next. I just wanted to follow up with Mark, Mark, you mentioned uh, the efforts that the Mets made to express their interest in you. I was wondering, was there, there one uh, gesture or action that, that stood out? Yeah, they they actually, Sandy and Billy came out to, to see me in person, and um, nobody else did that. So that, that um, was big for me. It, it, I didn't think much of it at the time, but then after the meeting, I was like, thinking, man, I'm really glad they did that because I, I don't really know anything about the Mets. I, I've never, I don't think I've ever played a game against the Mets in my career. Uh, personally, the A's might have, but I, I think I've missed those games. So, so uh, it gave me some really good insight and, and it just made an impression on me how, how, um, how much they were talking to my wife, just as much they were talking to me and, and, it, it very, very much felt like a kind of like a family and, and they, they really cared about my wife being there and, and reassuring her about 
everything everything the organization has to offer and, and all that. So um, that that just really like kind of I would say the Mets may not have been the favorite before that meeting and then after the meeting they were like kind of one of the favorites so it was it was um the fact that they were the only team that did that was was pretty pretty cool made a big impression and, and showed me a lot and when did that meeting happen Mark? uh two weeks ago guys it was on a, it was on a monday it was on ken it was on sandy's birthday it was he jumped sandy's on a birthday. plane sorry sandy <laughs> i'm sorry he jumps on a plane. He jumps on a plane in Florida, flies to Phoenix, meets me in Phoenix. I get the better end of the deal, right? I'm like 45 minutes away. <laughs> then Sandy jumps back on a plane same day to fly back to Florida as, yeah. on his birthday. So yeah, full commitment. Full commitment there. Yeah, Sorry. my Sorry. agent texted me. Sorry. My agent texted that, me but... and said, "Hey, you, you know, I'm like driving cool. to the meeting, and he goes, hey, it's by the way, it's Sandy's birthday, so wish him a happy birthday. And, and me and my wife are going, oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> so that was last week, right, Thanksgiving week? Uh, uh, Monday. It was a Monday before uh, Thanksgiving. Yeah. All right. Thank you, and uh, happy belated, Sandy. Hey, one of my better birthdays. <laughs> uh, Andy Martino, your line is open. Billy, I got two questions for you. Um, one is, are we at the point now at 6.30 uh, tonight where are like conversations between clubs and agents really slowing down generally? Do you sense just because people are anticipating what could happen at midnight? Is, are, are we in that phase now where it's slower? or trade talks in particular still going on generally? The second question is about the versatility. You've spoken about the value of it and you've been asked about how the game is trending that way over the last couple of years. Do you think in your experience with, in New York that you already have, that that's a harder sell in some ways or a bigger uh, a talking point in New York? Like there's always people like us always want to know who's the closer, who's the center fielder, who's the first baseman. The, the Giants didn't have an answer to those questions a lot of times. It was just so versatile and so many guys got 200 at bats and played around the diamond. Do you think New York presents a challenge because we're so used to talking about the game in a certain way to, to selling this even just to the public or not having your manager have to answer these kind of questions every day? Yeah. Um, so as far as the versatility aspect, you know, it is, you know, it, it is, it is really important um, for me to be able to, to offer um, a lot of different options and to kind of manage the workload. Um, I, I, I understand the value, you know, I, you know, growing up as a kid, uh, you know, growing up you know, on the West coast, you know, being able to think to myself like, Oh yeah. Okay. You know, uh, Terry Kennedy's catching tonight. And Kevin McReynolds is playing center field. And, you know, Craig Nettles is playing third. I'm talking about a Padre club, you know, growing up and, and like, I can do that. Um, but I also understand winning baseball and, and winning baseball is about taking 27 outs away from that other team quickly, as quickly as we can. And sometimes we're going to hand the ball to some pitchers and say, go as deep as you can. And sometimes we might hand the ball to the pitcher and go, you're going to get nine hitters right now and give everything you've got for these, these nine hitters. And if we can pull outs away there, that contributes to winning baseball. Similarly, you know, city fields, a tough outfield to play. Um, and it's, it's not, you know, it's a, it's a tough hitters park and that means a lot of balls in the outfield. So I kind of look at the outfield, like you have this responsibility to stand and, you know, in this you know, field of grass and the ball is going to get hit. And how many can you go catch? How difficult was that, that ball hit? How hard was it hit? What was the trajectory? What was the chances of catching it? And can our guys catch more than the average fielder? And I really, I don't fall in love with wherever they stand. They can stand wherever they stand. Ideally, they're right where the balls are hit. But can they can they get on their horse? Can they motor? And can they chase the ball down and catch it? And I really, it doesn't matter to me if they're playing right, left, center, rover. I, it doesn't matter. Just catch the ball. Um, and, uh, and and we're going to try to do our best to put them in the position to, to, to do that and to kind of understand how fast they run and what kind of range and do they go a certain direction better and, and really like challenge them with some deliberate practice to, to, to reinforce that. So while it might, um, while, while you might not be able to predict who's playing where 
on a particular day, um, you know, we're going to do what we can to, to contribute to winning baseball. As far as the uh, activity, um, you know, there um, I've still been pretty active today um, in between some, some, you know, press and, and uh, press conferences and some, some radio spots. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I've still been talking to clubs. In fact, I was talking to a team at, you know, I almost was late to the, late, late to the, late to signing onto the zoom. So, uh, yeah, still, still active. Clubs perceive that there's still time to make a trade. Seems. Yeah. I think, I mean, I think, you know, by and large, you could, you could approach it, um, similar to a trade deadline, I guess, for, for lack of a, lack of a, a better way to, to frame that. Eddie Coleman, we will come to your line next. Uh, welcome, guys, Starling, Mark, and uh, and Eduardo. I, uh, this is for Eduardo uh, in particular. Um, Eduardo, you you played all around the infield. I, I don't think shortstop lately, but you played the other three positions uh, a lot. I just wonder where you're most comfortable and uh, and what you think your best position is. Eduardo, tu jugado en en todas las posiciones del infield, eh, tú no has jugado shortstop en, en, en mucho tiempo, pero ¿a dónde tú te sientes más cómodo en el infield? Bueno, yo, yo siempre eh, soy una persona que, que a mí, para mí lo más importante es mi nombre en el line, no, no importa la posición que esté. Yo creo que siempre tengo una mentalidad de, de que llegue a la Grandes Ligas es que eh, siempre estoy a la disposición de ayudar al equipo a ganar. Este, para mí lo más importante es mi nombre En, en el line todos los días y yo siempre daré eh, lo mejor de mí en cualquiera de las posiciones que me llegue a necesitar hermana pero eh, estoy acostumbrado o se me acostumbró a tercera me gustó la segunda ahora aprendí a jugar primera también yo creo que es una de las cosas que que cualquier man le, 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 le encantaría este jugar también por campo corto creo que jugar todas las posiciones pero como te digo no tengo para mí la prioridad sea, sea, sea tercera pero sé cuando tienes un equipo como el que, el que estoy ahora Yo creo que dar la flexibilidad al manager de cualquier posición que me pueda necesitar, yo creo que estaré 100% porque tengo experiencia de jugar en todas las posiciones. I'm the type of player that, as long as I see my name in, in the lineup, I'm, I'm fine because I know I can help the team win. Um, over over the last couple of years, I've been able to play all, all, all around the diamond. I've played third, I can play second, I can play first. I learned how to play first. Um, and I think that's something a manager would love, just to have just to have that flexibility. Um, but with the type of team that we have, my preference would be third base, but it doesn't matter wherever the manager wants me to play, uh, I'll play. I, I know that the type of team that we have, we have a, a really skillful team that can play all around. And, um, and yeah, that's, that's all I want to do. I'm, that's been my goal since I first got to the major leagues is to play wherever, play wherever they need me. And as long as I'm in the lineup, I know that I can, I can produce for the team. Thank you. Uh, Max, uh, Jimenez, we'll come to your line next. Hold on, Max. We'll get you unmuted. Uh, can you, you hear me? Can you hear me? Yep, go ahead. Okay, hola. Eh, buena, buenas noches. Max Pérez Jiménez de la Cadena en Español de los Mex en Nueva York. En primer lugar, quiero dar las gracias a Mr. Coin, Steve Coin, a Sandy, a Billy por regalarnos una tremenda semana de Acción de Gracias. Eh, bienvenidos, Stalin, Eduardo y Mark. Como bateadores le pregunto, ¿qué se siente jugar con los dos mejores lanzadores del béisbol de tu lado? First off, how does it feel to um to to be able to as, as hitters to be able to play with with two of the the greatest pitchers in the league right now? Bueno, para mí de verdad que primero bastante contento que no voy a enfrentar más. <laughs> Pero de verdad que para un orgullo, como te digo, yo creo que eh, no mira a Digrón y a, y a Chelsea ahora, yo creo que eso, eso es una gran bendición que uno tiene porque ahora lo tenemos en el mismo equipo, pero de verdad que hay que sentirse orgulloso. Yo me siento bastante orgulloso de compartir un club, de compartir un equipo con, con grandes estrellas, eh, los dos a yo, o Salón de la Fama en el futuro, pero este, de verdad que para mí es lo mejor, de verdad que, como se lo digo, no, 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 no tengo palabras para para decir lo que yo siento de estar en el club con ellos y bueno, ahora lo mejor de mí para yo hablar yo también first off thank just thankfully i don't we i don't i don't have to face them anymore going forward um but no it's it's a great blessing to be able to be teammates with with those two guys to be able to share the same clubhouse with those two guys um two cy young winners two future hall of famers uh lord willing 
But um, but yeah, I'm just I just can't wait to have that experience to be able to be a teammate of, of those two guys and, and just to be able to help them um, be their best selves going forward. All right. Starling. Bueno, para mí es lo mismo que dijo Cobal. Dos tremendo pitches. Eh, son varios turnos que, que no lo voy a ver. Y la verdad que va a ser emocionante poder ver eh, esos pitches dominando eh, a, estos, a estos bateadores. Ya que yo soy uno de los jugadores que me gozo el juego ahí atrás. Cada picheo eh, eh, que van tirando. Yo, puedo, yo que esté en el outfield puedo verlo y va a ser emocionante eh, estar cubriendo allá atrás y, y sacando lo más que pueda a esos a, a eso, a eso piches para que sigan batallando y tirando pelota y se lo gocen como yo. No, yeah, it's just like Escobar said, I'm, I'm not the type of player that's going to miss... Uh having those at-bats against those guys. Um, but yeah, no, it's going to be, it's going to be super exciting being able to see those guys live ever, uh, playing behind them. I'm the type of player that, that enjoys every second, every pitch when I'm, when I'm there in center field. And um, yeah, I'm just going to try to, I'm, I'm just going to try to my best to, uh, to get as many outs as possible to catch as many fly balls as possible. Um, yeah. Going forward. I just hope that they enjoy their game as much as I enjoy theirs. And uh, finally, Mark, your thoughts there. Um, I just feel lucky to, to be blessed to, to be on this team with, with such great pitchers like that. And I, I haven't seen uh, Max or Jacob pitch actually ever in person. So I'm, I'm very excited to kind of witness their greatness and, and um, kind of not only that, but see, see their routines and see how they go about their business in the clubhouse and, and uh, and feel ready to kind of get inspired by that. So um, yeah, I've I've heard great things about both of those guys. I've I've played um, this year with with players that have played with them, and and so I've heard heard a lot of of really good things. So I'm excited to see it for myself. Next question will come from Jake Siner. There we go. Hey guys, Jake Siner from the AP. Uh, question for Mark. Mark, I've been running the uh, Big League Foodie Instagram account for several years now, and I'm just curious if you have a list of restaurants picked out in New York or some favorites you're going to come back to, and just what uh, you know. It's a pretty good food city. What your level of excitement is to be coming here and doing that? Yeah, I'm very excited. Um, I yeah, I, I love food. I appreciate food greatly, and and. Um, I've, I've been to a lot of great ones already. Um, but yeah, I, I have, have some ones in mind. Um, off the, I mean, I haven't really hit the big like Michelin star ones that I've wanted to hit when I've come to New York, just because, um, limited off days and, and such to, to do dinners, but, um, per se, 11 Madison Park, La Bernadette are, are, are on my short list and, and not just the fancy ones. I, I like the, I like everything. So um, I think the, this less well-known, lesser known restaurants uh, off the beaten path ones, I'm, I'm going to need some help with those from, from the fans and from people. So um, yeah, but I, I can't wait to, to dive in and, and uh it's overwhelming. I mean, everyone's already telling me where to go eat on Twitter and stuff. And I'm, and I'm like, I can't, this is it's too much noise. I, I can't uh, keep up with this on, on Twitter. It's, but um, I'll figure out something. I'll figure out a way. I, I got to get going on that though. Um, Mark Sanchez, your line is open. Hey guys, I'm Mark Sanchez from the New York Post, uh, and I want to follow up, follow up on Starling and, and thank you, Alan. Um, I want to follow up on Cano. Did he recruit you at all during this process? Have you talked with him recently? Él te quiere preguntar de de, de Robinson Cano. Eh, ¿Tú hablaste con él antes de firmar o o tú hablaste con él después que firmaste? No. Eh, mira qué casualidad que no hablamos antes de por eh, 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 razón, no sé, 
pero él es uno de los primeros que siempre eh, me llama, me escribe y mira, estamos tratando de, de, de firmarte, pero tal vez no lo hizo porque sabe que no tenían, no tenían gerente lo primero y no se sabía. Pero desde que firmé, él me llamó, me escribió y como siempre, a la, disposi a la disposición, a lo, a lo que yo necesite y, y por eso seguir. No, so we didn't, we didn't speak uh, before signing. Uh, usually we speak, we speak uh, in previous years, we've spoken about possibly being teammates together and he's talking about, oh, like you should come play with us. But um But after I signed, he was he was one of the first people to to, to hit me up. Uh, he sent me a uh, he sent me a message and and we spoke a little bit there. But I always look forward to having conversations with him just to just to continue learning from him. Mark Roseman, your line is open. Hi guys, I have a question for Billy and the three of you. The, the first question, Billy, and this kind of stuck with me from your introductory press conference where you talked about Stick Michael and you know using the eyeballs, looking at a guy on deck and, and seeing body language. Um, we've talked a lot about analytics. These three guys are, are really high on base percentage guys. You know, when it comes to hiring a manager, um, will you give that manager that latitude where Maybe a particular batter has good numbers against a pitcher, but that particular day, that manager's eyeballs are telling him differently. And is there more latitude with a veteran manager to be able to do that? And secondly, for the, the three players, if you can do it in alphabetical order, um, you come from small markets um, that you've played in. Have you spoken to players that have played here in New York and, and what extra baggage comes with that? And how are you guys equipped to deal with that? Thanks, guys. Um, you want me to go first here? Yeah, please, Billy. Okay. Um, so thanks for the question, Mark. And, uh, you know, um, appreciate you acknowledging Stick. Uh, very impactful, um, you know, mentor for me in my, you know, developmental years, right, in, in professional baseball. And so, um, you know, I, I, do, um, I do value, um, you know, when a batter steps in the batter's box, the ability to make good decisions um, on swing and no swing, right? So you have a decision to make every single pitch you see. And ultimately, it's not driven by pitches per plate appearance or walks. It's really driven by decision making. Um, and if they make good decisions and, and people that have, you know, a high degree of, of concentration and a high degree of focus, and I think that's what I alluded to in that introductory press conference, is people that have that high degree of, of concentration and focus you know, tend to make better swing, no swing decisions. Um, and, you know, there's the result when you step in the batter's box, you know, the result, um, that's the process, the swing decisions, right? But the result is you either go on base, or you go to the dugout. Um, and so if we can keep people on base and kind of keep a conveyor belt going, that's just the more run scoring opportunities that present themselves. As far as, you know, how that's, that, that plays with, you know, you know our, our, our manager, um, that manager will have the latitude to, to, make those, to make those decisions and make those assessments. I like to look at the um, involvement of information, and we can step back 30 years if you want, 20 years, and, and before a lot of some of the predictive analytics integrated, um, there were still – things that managers were looking at to kind of help guide the decision-making process. Um, some of those, um, you know, some of those tools have become more formalized, um, have become better studied, have been, you know, better practice. Those processes have been improved. Um, and so you can use those to kind of create a map, but a map, um, I like to look at a map is, is maps, not the territory. So a map is, this reduction and says, all right, if you're walking this path, here's, you know, here's an angle you can take to get to where you want to go. Well, what do you do if, if there's a tree that fell, right? What do you do if there's a, a forest fire, right? You can't take that. You can't go that way. Um, so you have to have adjustability. And that is where the art comes in to managing a baseball game putting a lineup together. That's where the decision-making comes, come, comes into play. And, 
you know, you'd love to play odds, right? We all love, well, there's a huge city in the desert that was built on odds, you know? Um, so we want to play odds, um, but there's rationale behind maybe not playing that odd at that particular moment in time. And that's what you entrust your, your coaching staff to be able to, to kind of filter through, you know, in game. Sorry for the long-winded answer, but I thought it kind of merited some, some explanation behind it. So um, that's, how, that's how we want to we want to look at it. Thank you, Billy. Alan, if you can uh, finish off for the guys the next part. Yeah. Yeah. Ustedes traen han jugado en, en ciudades pequeñas con los equipos que no tienen tanto, tanto reportero, tanta, tanta, tanta prensa. Ustedes han hablado con otros jugadores que han jugado aquí para, para consejos y para, para poder navegar en, en una ciudad como Nueva York. Bueno, no. En realidad... En realidad no, así. Gente me ha dicho dónde viví y eso, pero no. No, to be honest, um, I've never, I've never asked about it. Uh, some, some guys have told me what's a good spot to live or, or things like that, but, but I've never, I've never bothered to ask about um, the big city and the baggage. ¿Cómo, cómo fue la pregunta que hicieron? Que tú has jugado en una ciudad pequeña sin, sin muchos reporteros, sin mucha atención. Ahora que estás jugando en, en Nueva York con, con tanta atención, eh, tú has buscado eh, consejos con los jugadores que, que han jugado aquí. No, de verdad, todo, todo, como dicen, todavía no, pero yo creo que tengo muy buena comunicación con Carrasco, con Taguan que todos ellos, yo creo que se le pasa la pregunta, también con Lindor, pero yo sé que la, la responsabilidad que uno tiene es jugar aquí en Nueva York, una ciudad grande, totalmente diferente a donde, donde uno ha jugado, pero yo creo que cuando uno sabe lo que uno tiene que hacer, cuál es la responsabilidad de uno, yo creo que ese es el secreto de, de, de profesional como somos y ese, ese, eso es lo que uno tiene que yo creo que porque estemos jugando en Nueva York yo creo que uno no puede hacer más de lo que uno puede hacer porque yo creo que no viene el problema y, y eso es lo más importante, yo creo que pues, Stanley, un, eh, Stanley, Mar y yo somos gente que tenemos nuevo aquí, pero creo que si nosotros sabemos eh, jugar viejo como siempre lo hemos jugado, creo que vamos a, estar, vamos a estar vivos, vamos a hacer un buen papel, yo creo que ese es el secreto de, de nosotros, sabemos está, en dónde estamos pisando pero como te lo digo, yo creo que cada uno de nosotros tenemos nuestra responsabilidad y podemos hacer nuestro trabajo como siempre lo hemos hecho. Um, no, I, 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 haven't, I haven't thought much about it, but I know that I can reach out to Carlos Carrasco, Tywin Walker, uh, even Francisco Lindor about, about how it is over here. But I know that, that playing here is, is completely different from playing anywhere else. And I, and I know the responsibility that we have when we, when we, when we play for, for this team and for the city. So... So I, I think if we're able to produce the way that we do on field and what's expected of us and, and we're also responsible and, and, we, and we do what we need to do um, outside, off the field, I, I think we're going to be okay. Um, I know myself, Mark, um, and, and Starling are new, are new to this team, and, but, but, but I think that we can do good things if, as long as we, we play to our ability and we're, and we're responsible with, with um, what's demanded of us off the field. And finally, uh, Mark, your thoughts there. Um, yeah, I've heard, you know, you hear stories about what it's like to play in New York. Um, I, I've always liked the big stage kind of, um, even though I'm, you know, I played in Oakland the last seven years, but um, every time we go to Yankee Stadium or Fenway Park or uh, Wrigley or these big, big stadiums with, with uh big market clubs. Um, I, I always reveled at the, the chance to, to play in front of those crowds and kind of, kind of show off. So, um, I like, I like the big stage and, and I think it, it also kind of is fitting to my game with, with the noise and stuff. I, I think I have a, an ability just like I've seen these other guys, I would say the same thing about these guys watching them play. Um, I just have an ability to kind of tune that out and, and focus on what I need to focus on. And, and I feel like uh, it kind of gives me an advantage sometimes too, when, when other teams come into, are going to come into New York and, and maybe be a little shaky. Um, I think that that plays into my game because I can control the strike zone and, and, uh, and take advantage of that. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we have time for just a couple more quick ones. Uh, Daniel Reyes, uh, go ahead, please. Yeah. 
Nope, need to unmute, Daniel. There you go. Well, now, now, let's go. Good. All right. Stanley, este, Escobar, felicidades por jugar una gran ciudad tan grande como lo es Nueva York. Para ustedes, el significado de jugar en frente de tantos latinos que van a ir a apoyar a los MEA ahora, porque hicieron buenas contrataciones. El equipo y los fanáticos tienen ansias de ganar una serie mundial que no lo hacen desde 1986. Bueno, eh, para nosotros va a ser fabuloso eh, jugar en la ciudad ya que tantos latinos que nos conocen y nos siguen, eh, para ellos ver, para ellos ver ¿no? todos los días en el terreno, eh, jugando duro, eh, haciendo otra jugada, compartiendo con ellos mismos. Eh, tú muy bien sabes que me conoces bien, que viene conmigo de Dominicana, eh, sabes la clase de persona que soy, eh, cómo me dedico también eh, afuera a, a del terreno y adentro, y, y para nosotros va a ser fabuloso estar jugando ahí y traer más fanáticos al estadio. It, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be great to, to be able to, to play there in front of the fans. Um, I'm excited. You know how I am um, about how much fun I have with the fans during, during my time on the field. You know how I dedicate myself um, on and off the field day in and day out. But, yeah, I can't wait to, to play in front of in front of all the fans, especially the Latino fans that are, that are going to come to the stadium. It's just because there are just so many of them. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited to, to play this year. Thank you, uh, Alan and Starling. Uh, Mark Healy, your line's open, please. No, go ahead and unmute, Mark. Here we go. Uh, this question is for Billy. Um, first of all, welcome uh, to New York uh, again. Um, my question is, uh, last year, obviously, uh, the team struggled uh, overall with uh, hitting with runners in scoring position. So one of the first things I did when you acquired uh, these three gentlemen was to look at their numbers with runners in scoring position, all three of them. Uh, whether it's on-base percentage, whether it's slugging percentage, whether it's uh, OPS overall, uh, they all performed very well, especially last year with runners in scoring position. Did that play a role in your acquiring them? Um, not th those specific lines, but kind of more of the, of the process that, that drives those, those type of numbers. So, um, you know, something that I learned um, – you know, in, in, in my baseball development is that, you know, a lot of times those runners in scoring position numbers, you know, they fluctuate a, a good deal um, because you're dealing with, you know, kind of a limited sample. But if you kind of think at what drives those numbers, it's generally contact um, because oftentimes you get that runner in scoring position, the single can score them unless it's a really well hit single to an outfielder that's got a you know, really good, uh, really good arm. And, you know, maybe the infielders are playing double, not to get too deep, but like the infielders playing double play depth and they're pinching and so on and so forth. But for the most part, contact's going to help drive that. So, so, you know, I value contact. Um, I think contact's a, uh, a skill that's been, you know, maybe not as, uh, not as valued um, by, by some clubs. And, you know, your ballpark does drive a lot of it. You know, so where you're playing your games and, and for us playing 81 games in City Field and having a couple other ballparks um, in the National League East that are, you know, a little bit maybe a little tougher to, to maybe go deep in, um, you know, that that contact, that ability to make contact, uh, you know, plays a little bit more of a premium. So um, that should, by and large, help drive those numbers. But again, there's going to be variability on them. You can still hit the ball and put the ball in play and they could put their defenders in the right spot so um but uh but at least you know maybe at least the odds are a little bit more in our favor so hopefully results follow thank you billy final question will come from pat regazzo hi everyone um welcome to new york and congratulations this one's for eduardo earlier today max scherzer mentioned that his good friend and former teammate brian dozier recommended you as a teammate and said how much how close you guys were and how much he enjoyed playing with you so I was wondering if you knew that that conversation took place and that you kind of almost had an indirect role in possibly Max's decision to come here. Eh, 
anteriormente hoy um, Max Scherzer dijo que, que él habló con Brian Dozier y Brian Dozier dijo que, que, uh, que, que tú eras uno de los mejores uh, compañeros que, que era tu vida. Uh. ¿Tú, ¿Tú te enteraste de, de esa conversación hoy o tú sabías de eso ya? No, hoy me enteré, me enteré porque eh, me lo mandó un pastor eh, en Arizona de la conversación. Sí, es verdad, tengo muy buena relación con Brian Dolce. De hecho, una de, la, de las personas que, 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 que dirijo, me ha dirigido, me ha aconsejado tanto en el béisbol, eh, ha sido Brian Dolce, ¿verdad? Que se, lo quiero como mi hermano, este, que jugamos juntos en, en Minnesota. Me ha enseñado mucho el valor que jugar al béisbol todos los días duro. Y es uno de los ejemplos que siempre se lo voy a agradecer, de verdad, él, este, como él, como John Mauer, todas esas estrellas que me, han, que, me han, que me han enseñado mucho a respetar este juego y a jugar béisbol 100% duro. Yo creo que, que, que es muy bonito cuando eh, gente retirada como él este, se sigue expresando de buena manera. Eso, eso le da a uno el, el valor de la personalidad que es uno, pues, dejar los buenos amigos siempre. Y yo creo que eso es una de las cosas que yo me enfoco mucho en, en la buena amistad, el buen, ser un buen compañero y siempre está apoyando... Este, a mis compañeros, no importa lo que pase, porque de esa escuela vengo yo, donde, donde aprendí viendo las superestrellas, eh, siendo buenas personas, y por eso que fueron superestrellas. No, um, I, didn't, I didn't know about that conversation um, before today. Uh, a pastor actually sent me that, that, uh, that quote, and, and, and that, that's how I found out about it. But yeah, uh, me and Brian Dozier are great friends um, from our time in Minnesota. I, uh, I, consider, I consider him a brother. He taught me a lot about the game. He taught me a lot about how to honor the game and, and, and really appreciate it. Um, guys like him, guys like Joe Maurer during my time in Minnesota really, really taught me how to, how to, how to take everything in and, and, uh, and, and really appreciate the game. Uh, that's, why, that's why those guys were, were superstars um, during their time when they played it because they were, they were really humble about it and they were able to appreciate the game. They were really able to teach a lot about the game and, and not take themselves too seriously. And, um, and, that, and that's what I'm still trying to do. I'm, I'm trying to, to pass on those same lessons that I learned from them. Mark, Eduardo, and Starling, 